one question I think you all have as, as entrepreneurs is, do I really need to go to an accelerator or an incubator or can I just go to our good friend Shailesh and ask for money? And, and what are my chances of getting money from Shailesh versus if I go through Ajay? And I think this is a question that all of you probably have because you know, I'm sure a lot of you are trying to understand so what's the value proposition that an incubator brings to the table? Um, there's a lot of talk about it. So, you know, Pranay and, and Ajay, I think that that's something that we probably may need to sort of articulate a little bit so that people know what the options are. Sure. So, in fact, I'll step a step, I'll take a step back. I think, first of all, you don't have to go to anyone. Forget it, going to incubator, accelerator, you don't even have to go to Shailesh. Uh, and so I, can, especially I can do it out of my garage then. <laughs> the, the reason I'm saying this and a lot of times we come to come across traditional businesses or like the businesses we see a lot of sort of these exhibits outside. It's not like getting a funding from an investor is the way to win, right? What your dharm as an entrepreneur is to build a business, a very strong business and to get whatever resources you need for it. If the resources that you need is funding, go get funding. If the resources that you need is team, go get team. If the resources that you need is access to a network, go get that. So I think to that extent, I don't like, I'm worried about this whole element of funding is important for it to become a big business. It's not. I'll, I mean, go outside again, go to all those stalls, the businesses which are big, ask them, have you ever raised funding? I can assure you 80% of them will say never. Now to get back to, if you are in a business which needs funding and now you're looking to raise funding, I think the first element that you need to think of is what kind of funding works for you. Are you in a tech scalable kind of a business which is in a billion dollar market, a VC could make sense for you. In which case, yes, approach a VC. To approach a VC, working through a network is easier because a VC like Salesh, Salesh, my guess is you're getting what? Thousand mils a month with business plans. So he's getting six hundred business plans a month, right? He's looking at all those emails and deciding to delete Karumi another. And when he sees my name, hopefully he deletes it lesser. At least on stage, he'll say he deletes it lesser. Uh, so to that extent, I think going to a VC through a reference always works better than going directly. The reference could be one of us who do it as a business. The reference could be. Uh, your friend who happened to go to the same college with a VC, um, basically someone when VC sees that mail says, this guy does not send me anything. He's done his old filter. When I look at that, the probability of me thinking of it as a, pro a fundable plan is a lot higher than a random Joe email that comes to me. Ajay, what is your thoughts? Sure. So, uh, I mean, even though all this uh, talk around uh, tech businesses is so much in, in the media and hype and spoken about, it's not that uh, IT led or technology enabled businesses didn't exist in India before. I mean, uh, I met someone about three or four months back and they had recently raised a good chunk of money from one of the uh, fundraising platform, Let's Venture. And uh, he was saying that we have done a lot of IT business. Just that we didn't say that we didn't say that we didn't say but I exited that business successfully. We wanted to do a new business in the analytics space. And my co-founders were like, uh, rather than pulling in our own money, let us try, let us put in a little bit of our money, but let us also raise venture money. And that's when they went to a platform and raised money from there. So I mean, it's, it's not that uh, without getting into a, an incubator or an accelerator, businesses can't be run. It very well can be run. Uh, but like what Pranay mentioned, one of the advantages which, uh, especially if you're doing a, a venture for the first time, uh, is that you need, and if you don't really have a very extensive network, probably getting into an incubator or an accelerator, uh, it offers that kind of a, a platform where you can leverage a lot of resources, a lot of network. And uh, likewise, even for, for someone like a Shailesh or a fund, I guess just like businesses need validation of customers, uh, for them, going to an incubator or an accelerator where a startup has been uh, there for three months or six months, because they're not just going to look at how beautiful your, your presentation or your projections are because they're just numbers and it is someone's thought that they've put on to paper. But uh, for funding a business, I guess they look at things beyond that, like the, uh, the ethics of uh, the, the entrepreneur, the way they have built up the team. Uh, are they like people who are really hungry for business? Are they following through on stuff? So a lot of softer things 
which probably uh, getting into an incubator or an accelerator, they can talk to someone who's running it and understand more of the softer side of things. So it's a kind of a due diligence that the, the incubator or an accelerator provides to them. And thereby, their, uh, the, the quality of the deal flow that they would look at, kind of the screening happens. Because if someone receives 600 to 1,000 business plans a month, I mean, it is uh, inhuman. I mean, even to, be, uh, even to think that they will be able to go through everything of it, it's just not going to happen. So, so yeah, incubators and accelerators can help them vet that or cut short that process. So one question I have for the audience, how many of you are doing traditional, what we call as non-tech businesses, you know, the, 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 the core, like most of the ones that are out there, how many of you? And how many are doing the so-called tech businesses? It's, it's sort of even, right? Yeah, it, it's all, almost. Yeah. What are all the yeah, I, I don't know. So what are the others doing? Are the others still thinking as to whether I should start a company or not? I guess. So one question, I mean, one thing that I want to also share is the whole outside angel venture, whatever you want to call it. Right? I mean, this is called angels because, you know, this is all typically early stage and, and angels tend to be the ones that sort of give you the money. The first guys take the most risk, but also look for big payoffs. And then comes people like Shailesh, and then growth capital, expansion, later stage. So it, so it just goes that way. Most companies and most sustainable, successful businesses the world over have all been built without outside capital. And that's something that a lot of people tend to forget. So one, one of the questions that I'll ask Shailesh, because this is a question I'm sure Shailesh sort of grapples with almost every day is, when is the right time for you to, to raise money? And when is it the right time to say, I still have more time? Or when is it that you're going to tell them your, your deal is not really fundable, but it's a great business. Why don't you just go and do this and, and make some, and, and you know, you'll make money, but it's not something that we can fund. A uh, great question. So there are two components of it I will address. Uh, so first is when you should go to a VC to raise money or go to an angel. So say it five years back or four years back, you know, building software was tough. You need to take a lot of time, a lot of money to build it, any kind of a small stack also. But with a passage of time and with availability of a lot of environment, especially like AWS as a hosting platform, then coding platforms, you know, multiple frameworks. So building a software is much easier. So today, if you are in a software space and you come to me without your, what we call a minimum viable product, the chances are we won't even grant a meeting. So forget about the discussing idea, right? We have funded as a comp as a fund. We have funded at the what we call the PPT stage. Uh, in this fund also, I think I have around close to four companies which was done at the idea stage, right? But today I won't do that uh, because we have seen that the the today starting business has become much cheaper than what it was say five years back. However, operating a business is more expensive than what it was again earlier, right? So the capital definition has changed. So obviously we like to have the companies where some kind of you know signs of life are seeing. So everybody asks me, you know, what the traction you want, what numbers you want, right? We are a c country of what you corporate exams. So people want to know what numbers we want and I will give you right, <laughs> exactly right. But as a yeah. investor, we never see that. Traction is not that, okay, this is the sale I'm getting, this is the number of transaction I'm doing, or this is the uh, revenue I'm getting, right? Traction, somebody tweeted uh, last week, traction is when, when some, comp some of your customers are pounding on your door and trying to get in, right? When there is that crazy need for a product. When you can demonstrate that you can create a, what we call the insane consumer happiness. So if you demonstrate that, whether you have two people or whether you have 2,000 people, I don't care. But, but I want to see that sign, some little bit of what we call green shoots of that insane consumer delight. If you can create that, yes, we are looking at it. If you can't, then everything is the idea. And to just uh, say a word, because in this, I basically we also believe that ideas are very overrated, right? Uh, especially, you know, India. And I say that there is no idea which a round of vodka or whiskey can't create, right? <laughs> Enough of liquor, and you create ideas like crazy, right? So, so what what we really value is the execution. How do you uh, how do, can you execute? What uh, values you demonstrate? So that's the first part. The second part is: Do you really need VC money? So as a VC, you try to understand that our game is again here to make money. And we can make money only by exiting these businesses, right? And as a, as a fund or any fund in the world, generally want to make minimum 10 times. So if I give you two crore rupees, right? What I want from you is 20 crores in four or year, years time, which is not a small set of money, right? It is as good as 30 to 40% IRR every year, while your bank finances somewhere around 12 to 14. 
So why is that so? so? So the point is that can only happen if your business can go and become very big. That's why every VC, every forum will go. People talk of scale, scale, scale. Scale is not very important, right? There are a lot of good businesses which are say at 5 crore, 2 crore, or 10 crore, 20 crore. So you have to decide where you want to be, right? If you think, okay, you want to create a good business of 10, 20, 30 crore, do not waste your time going to VCs. There will be sheer waste of time, right? You, because even if you don't want to raise money, getting a no always creates some kind of negative sentiment, right? So do not get into that game. So if you say, okay, I want to create a business of 100 crores and I never want to sell my business, VCs are not the people, right? Because we will take your business, we will definitely get out after four or five years and we'll sell it out, right? So we, we say we are not in a marriage, we are not a one-night stand, we are a short term, you know, with a strong peeling up. So after four years, we are bound to have a divorce. So it's so an affair then, short term yeah, it's, affair. It's, it's a four year long affair, right? And we want to have a divorce, right? Uh, and we have very strong pinups. So that's what you have to understand about the VC business, right? We are not there forever. We do not fund you to create a business for a whole life. If you want to create a business for Ganson, please do not come to us. Because after five or six years, you need to know that how you will get, get me out. That's very, very important for us. So I think those are business probably we should not come to us. Okay. So. Uh, Another question is, and, and this has got to do more with the fact that there's a lot of business press about all the fancy funding that has happened to a lot of companies, right? There, and there are all these poster, poster child, so girl, gal, who's all raised, you know, significant amounts of money. They're all building, you know, the next huge thing and it could end up being, you know, billion dollar businesses. Uh, this is a question that goes to the entire panel is, is you know, for a lot of the entrepreneurs, and, and this is a personal observation, and, and this may be, you know, something that I have observed and, and may not necessarily be uh, true of the entire early stage of the angel ecosystem, is the fact that a lot of entrepreneurs think that funding is the end game, and it is not. It is the starting game. So, some some feedback and some perspectives on on that, especially from you know, people like Ajay and Pranay, who actually advise and, and mentor a lot of these early stage guys and saying you have to build sustainable businesses and sustainable businesses means you know venture funding if you do get venture funding is, is just one step yeah uh, I mean one of the things that at least in our model what we uh, look for is that before a company is is ready or a company goes on to to whether it's a uh, an external investor, if, if you just put it, without talking of CED angel or, or VC, is that you need to, to build your business in, in a kind of a sustainable way. So most of the businesses that we work with are, are in the B2B or business-to-business -business kind of space, but several of them in the B2C space as well. One of the things that as an accelerator or as a program is, that we focus on is, is bringing in some of the top corporates to come and meet with our companies on an ongoing kind of a basis uh, with an end objective of trying to create opportunities for the companies to, or the startups to sell into these companies. So doing uh, POCs or like uh, pilots or proof of concepts wherein they can generate a little bit of revenue. It may not be 100% but still a certain percentage because it does two things. One, you're getting a, a kind of a good customer. Two, uh, the customer is willing to pay you a little bit of money. So that helps you in, in bootstrapping for a little longer. But at the same time what it does is if someone is willing to pay you even a rupee for your product, that means that there is some validation because particularly in a country like ours, I mean, people want a lot of things for free. I mean, whether in the, in the B2B space or B2C space. And that's where we see that a lot of startups are very hesitant in charging a fee because they feel that the moment they charge even a rupee, the customer is going to fall off. They are happy building a business, having 50,000, 80,000 customers. And I'm talking of some of the startups that have been a part of our accelerator. But they don't have any kind of uh, monetization angle that they have even thought of because they feel that the moment they even put a rupee to it, that customer is going to go away. So this is something that we try and uh, advocate or, or talk to our startups on an ongoing basis that create a model where you're sustainable, you're generating some amount of revenue before you go to someone to, to seek some kind of funding. Because if you're not able to do it and you're not pumping in the kind of money that you need to, resources that you need to, why will someone externally fund you? Why will they put money into your business? I mean, you yourself, friends, family, father-in-laws, fools, whoever, you can take a little bit of money from and build a kind of a business acquire those customers, generate revenue, then you go out for, for raising venture capital money or raising external funding. Sure. Uh, so I'll just add another angle to ensure that I refrain from repeating. Uh, on the investment part of it, the what we advise entrepreneurs a lot is, 
invariably the way sort of it appears like is you go to a VC, you say, sir, please rupee chahiye. VC says, great rupee le lo. You bring the money home and everything is happy, happy. It really works that way. Plus, what we try to insert in between is you also do the due diligence on the VC or the investor who's giving you money. So, for example, if you're talking to an angel investor, he says, I'm willing to give you money. Check with him what are the other startups he's given funds to. Call up the entrepreneurs there and check with him how was he after he gave the money because giving money is just the first step. You're getting into a marriage which will last at least four or five years, maybe longer. You want to ensure like the per I'm sure a lot of you have done due diligence before getting married or for yourself or for others. It's equivalent due diligence, right? Do your homework. Second is think of what is the thesis this person is investing on and does that fit your goals or not? So if you're just the way Shelley said, right? If your goal is I'll become a hundred crore company, I'll be throwing out profits of 50 crore per year and I can return like I need 10 crores for this and I can easily give you back 20 crore. Great. It's a great business. It seems investable, but it doesn't seem VC investable. It seems investable by a by someone who's been investing in factories, by an angel who understands the cash flow based investment, etc. Uh, if you're in a business which says I'll throw out regular cash flow for a period of certain period and I'll go IPO, maybe it's uh, you should approach a PE, not a tech based VC. So think through this on what fits you better and then approach it, you'll waste less of your time. So, So yeah, uh, I just add one more thing. So just last week, uh, me and Pranay were actually at uh, another conference, and it was run by uh, 500 startups. They were doing a, a kind of the kind of investment thesis that they look at. So 500 startups typically uh, invest in in very very early stage kind of companies. So uh, Dave McClure, who is the founding partner of 500, what he was saying is that just imagine hypothetically two sets of entrepreneurs: one coming from a very reputed, prestigious kind of academic institution; the other set completely bad students who went to like really poor college which didn't have too much of academic repute and the and the, the, the investor puts in hundred thousand uh, dollars the kids who went to say the the reputed or the prestigious institutes after a, after a probably 18 month or 24 month they give a, a three time kind of a return when they exit and go on to the next round on the other hand you have these students jo bahut bekar type ke student the, makar type ke the, and within three months they just took away all the money and they just vanished so who would have been a better bet? According to them, take the over, better bet. Take over, take over. Okay. So amongst you, so A is the students who took 18 months, 18 months and gave time. 3x return. B is the students who uh, burnt out the money within three months period. According to you, which is a better return for 500 startups? A, people who say A. How many of you say A? How many of you say B? Yeah. Okay. People don't want to they, put they, themselves I, I in a spot. They don't want to commit so to it. See, I mean, if someone is investing money, they are not just investing their money, right? Uh, they're going to, to give you the time of the day. Uh, they're going to probably sit on your board meetings or whatever. So for over a period of 18 months, probably even if they, they meet you or talk to you once a month, it is significant amount of time that they're giving. They are probably going to advise you on your business. They're going to see how you're going to run your business. And like Silas said, I mean, any investor putting in their money would not look at a three times return after two years. Rather, in three months, burn away the money, do not give any return, at least you're saving another 15 to 18 months of my time, which I can invest more wisely somewhere else. So someone uh, who opted for probably answer B over here, saying that the, the guys who burned the money in three months and just didn't give any returns, probably for an investor, they are a better bet, right? Uh, I'll just say for yeah. a VC investor. For a VC investor. Yeah. For some investors, that might make more sense that also. So one thing I also want to, since this is supposed to be an angel um, discussion, um, is the fact that angels, how many of you know what an angel typically does? I think we've put them to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also the last session before lunch, so I'm sure most people are sort of thinking about lunch in any case. So, so an angel is, is, is essentially somebody who's, who tends to be an HNI, somebody who's a successful first generation entrepreneur or a, a professional, a CEO, who invests their own money. So the difference between an institutional fund and an angel, angel is typically investing their own money. 
and in addition to the investing their own money, what they're also doing is they're actually helping some of these early stage companies. So it's either through helping them recruit, market access, as well as connections to people like Shailesh. And that's the reason why a lot of people, especially when they're building companies and have to go through a multi-pronged you know, growth strategy, usually try and come to an, an angel and say, can you help me raise money? Because the quality of the angels, and you see this in, in the business press every day, the quality of the angels also to a certain degree determines you know, whether Shailesh and, and his group actually looks at some of these companies you know, favorably or not favorably. And, and, and that's one thing I also want you to keep in mind because angels are a different breed and angels look at risk differently and angels also have a different mindset when it comes to returns. But not to say they're doing this as a social thing, most of them really want to make money off of it. Uh, 